what is that one thing irritates most of the students i think it is to by heart the definitions yes while learning every subject we have to by heart few definitions but if you ask me it is not necessary to by heart the definitions word by word what you need to remember is two or three important jurist name who have contributed to that particular topic and then write the theme that they wanted to say it is not word by word give the major concept that they wanted to give in their definition so that you can still gain few marks now when we are writing definition for international law you need to bring three important names first being hugo grucius then jeremy bentham then opinion i have given about 10 definitions but you need to bring these three names in the initial part and then you can choose whichever definition is easy for you and write in the exams hey guys this is ganesh pujari and welcome to my legal classes and let's get into the world of definitions for international law i said there are three names one is hugo grotius then jeremy bentham and opinion why hugo grotius Hugo Grotius is very important because he is the father of modern science of international law. He wrote a book by name Due Jure Pelia Ac Pacis which is in English can be called as On the Law of War and Peace. And this book is one of the greatest contribution to the development of international law and he has given lot of perception towards international law not just because he is a jurist he was also a statesman and diplomat and that helped him to have a clear perception on international law and this is a kind of beginning of contribution towards international law by any of the jurist so hugo grotius is the first name that you need to take while writing definition part we are giving high respect to hugo grotius because it was not easy to think of international law during 16th century itself because during that time it was natural law which was mostly respected by all of the people most of the european thinkers treated law as something independent of mankind and they thought that natural law were imposed by deity now grotius was not against them however he believed that the natural law came from an essential universal reason which is common to all men that means he gave importance to actual practices customs and treaties that is the one big difference he brought in his thinking way one another important thing about hugo grotius is he always believed in progressive law by not being rigid to law what is but being supportive to law what ought to be that means it is not just about how law is present today it should be a thinking on how law should be for tomorrow now that became the first principle for international law also where he told it is not imposed from above or it is not given by the sovereign but rather derived from principles that means the people are creating laws by their practices customs treaties etc now that is how international law is seen today the international laws are made by people by their demand or their, by their requirement and second important principles that he has told to international law is the principle for international law should be promises must be kept or pacta sunt servenda that means once the nation gives promise to keep such treaty the same should be kept that is very important because in international law there is absence of sovereign one single sovereign so all the countries or state which are coming to that particular treaty should keep their promise or promises must be kept or pacta sunt servenda i will make a independent video on this particular aspect and that is the second big important theory that he has told for international law this is all you need to quote when you are writing about hugo grotius one another important thing that you need to remember is hugo grotius gave his thought even before the westphalian treaties of 1648 which were a turning point in establishing the principle of state sovereignty as a cornerstone of the international order now the next question is who used the term international law for the first time it was jeremy bentham who used this word for the first time in the year 1780 and in 1789 he used the term international relations in his book principle of moral and legislations why it was grotius who first gave the concept of international law it was jeremy bentham who first used the term international law or international relations now who gave the first comprehensive definition for international law the answer is lfl ofinium he gave this definition in the year 1905 i am telling the year because you need to remember that his definition is coming before any of the world war and he defines 
Law of Nations or International Law is the name for the body of customary laws and conventional rules which are considered binding by civilized states in their intercourse with each other. There are few aspects you have to observe from his definition. First being, he says law of nations or international law. That means law of nations can be used is equal to international law. And these are the names that is for the body of customary law and conventional rules. So that he is also giving the source for international law as customary law and conventional rules. And he is saying these are considered binding by civilized states. When he is saying civilized states, he is mostly referring to European countries and he is referring that this is for the intercourse with each other. That means for the transaction between those countries. Now this is his definition for international law. While this is considered as one of the first comprehensive definition on international law, there were sufficient criticisms against this particular definition because he was referring civilized states that means his definition was limited to only European countries and he completely neglected individuals and organizations. These are the few criticisms that you can refer as far as LFL Ophinium's definition is concerned. The next three definitions that is Braille's definition, Torsten definition and Grace definition are going with similar line. Braille states the law of nations or international law may be defined as the body of rules and principles of action which are binding upon civilized states in their relation with one another. Whereas Torsten Gill says the term international law means the body of rules of law which apply within the international community or society of states and Grace says international law or the law of nations is the name of a body of rules which according to their usual definitions regulate the conduct of states in their intercourse with each other. The seventh definition is coming from a case law which is given by Lord Coleridge in the case law of Queen versus Kane where it was defined the law of nations is that collection of usage which civilized states have agreed to observe in their dealings with one another. And if you ask me what is the dictionary meaning of international law? It is a body of rules established by custom or treaty and recognized by nations as binding in their relations with one another. It's very easy. This is established by customs or treaty and this is binding in their relations with one another. Now the ninth definition that is public international law is law of nations. It is study of international practices, customs, rules and treaties. Now you might be thinking that why are we using the term public international law? why it is coming yes there is private international law also now in my next video i am going to clarify what is public international law and what is private international law and then the differences between them before going there let's complete the tenth one which says international law is a system of treaties and agreements between nations that governs how nations interact with other nations citizens of other nations and business of other nations. So I am bringing here all the aspects, the relationship between nations and how are they governing between the nations and how are it connected with citizens of other nations and how are they connected to business of other nations. This is all about the definition of international law. I hope you got sufficient contents by now as far as definitions for international law is concerned. I have not tried to explain each and every definition because most of them are going with similar terms. So once I have explained the terms and then I just read out the definitions. Please read two or three times and by heart the definitions because they are very important. If you cannot pick all the words of the definition, pick the name and key concept that they have utilized. Uh, thank you so much for subscribing my channel. If you have already subscribed, if you are yet to subscribe my channel, please subscribe my channel right now. Please like and share my videos. Please also comment how exactly my videos are helping you. And all the very best for whatsoever purpose you are watching my videos. And thanks again.